let's get to my first guest. I am very excited slash really nervous. Um, she is a true Hollywood legend, a children's book author, and an just absolutely all class. She is a true lady. Dame Julia Andrews, are you there? I am here, and okay. you're there. I can see that you are. I'm looking I, I am. I'm very nervous and excited. I have one quick question, because I actually don't know this answer. Do you, are, do I say dame every time, or? No, certainly, no. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. So I was like, I you know or right. Jules, one of the two. Okay. I'll call, you, I'll call you. Dame is just a, a, a lovely uh, personal thing, and yeah, it's just something that one keeps kind of quietly to oneself. Some people use it. I, I don't, but uh, I'm very yeah. honored to be Well, so I know every time everybody, if I've ever had to say Sir Elton John, I always have to say Sir. So I'm like, I'm going to get this right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how are you? Because, I mean, this whole pandemic's happening. Are you safe? Are you healthy? I am safe. I am healthy. I am, uh, funnily enough, and I'm sure you find the same thing, I feel busier than ever uh, because one is doing so much via uh, the internet and using the computer so much and and contacting people and being in touch with families and doing zoom calls and god knows what else yeah no i've my husband and i were just talking about that i'm like i have never felt busier and i already was really busy so um but because it's now it's all the jobs like plus taking care of the children and cooking and clean all this stuff that i don't really I all of it so um, <laughs> how long have you been married Nick Kelly um we've been together for about eight years we've been married oh. for like seven yeah oh. he's That's good we're about uh, we're you know there have been points in this pandemic where I'm like you need to go <laughs> and he he feels the same so it's a lot of togetherness time with three we have four children but three are in our house with us right now because our oh my 18 so but but enough about me no one cares about me they care about you so well, no, do. I'm interested <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be you're way cooler um so my point though is I know that you will not remember this because it is like a non-event for you but just so you know um obviously the princess diaries you were in and I was the uh, the single from the movie um uh, the song was called breakaway and so they invited me to that premiere years ago and you don't know this but I was I never say hi to people generally because I get too nervous but our clothes, my dress, it was a green dress with flowers, and it grazed your clothes as we passed on the red carpet. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I you what? You think it's so silly, but it made my entire, like, I talked about it for a year. I was like, I was legit inches from Julian. But, but, but Kelly, didn't you send me something once? You sent me a recording of yours or something, I, I think. I did. It was because I had a Christmas record coming out, and I was hanging out with Trisha Yearwood, and her publicist, is it, do you have the same publicist, or something that was well same, I think it's the same um, agent I'm not sure agent that's what it was it was somebody she was at the house and she was like oh yeah I, I work with Julie Andrews and I was like wait what and, and I <laughs> And, and, and I was like, oh my God, I just covered my favorite things. And it's it's completely different. It's a different kind of version. Like for my yeah, you sent it to me, I think. Yeah. I thought she said, she was like, well, I'll send it to her. And I was like, oh my God, Julie Anderson's is going to have something I did. It was really amazing. <laughs> um, I love the way you sing, Kelly. It's lovely. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I try. Some days I sound, you know, nice. And some days I sound like J Janice Joplin because I'm tired, but whatever. Um, <laughs> you all do, believe me. <laughs> I was like, I just <laughs> whatever's happening. Um, but this, this pandemic, though, it's been separating people, but also uniting them. And I, I heard that you had said something interesting, and you said it reminded you of World War II a little bit. How, how so? I was a young child during the war, and it was that fear of the unknown, that lack of control that you have, a little bit like when you're in an earthquake or something, there's nothing you can do and you don't know when it's going to happen. But, but the war made everyone in England where I was born, we, we bonded like crazy because we absolutely had to support each other and be strong for each other and try to be brave and calm and so on. And it's very much the same way now with this huge pandemic and everybody's terrified and worried and scared. It's yeah. very similar. So for me, it brings back those memories a little bit. I did randomly, I did this interview in the UK um, a while back um, while promoting a record and Vanessa Redgraves is there promoting a project she was doing. And she actually talked about that in the interview. Did um, she? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, it was, you know, it was huge for those of us who were 
well, if it hadn't been for you wonderful Americans, we'd probably not be here today, but uh, who came in to help rescue and do wonderful things for us. But my, my parents and I, I was in Waterville in musical, and we went to an American army base and our salary was a good hearty meal. And I was given a T-bone steak, which I'd never seen in my life, but I'd never seen so much meat in my life. That entire T-bone would have fed our family during the rationing, uh, four of us, five of us, you know. Uh, yeah. It was the most wonderful supper. And uh, so seeing the way the, um, I guess it was an army, I, I think. I don't think it was Air Force, but whatever it was, it was an amazing visit. It really was. And I had to entertain, so. That's, uh, oh my God, but they freaked out. That's so cool. That's so cool. And you were, you said you were younger, right? Oh, yeah, I was very young, yes. But it, it was, um, well, I started singing when I was about seven or eight. So, yeah. Uh, and then the war ended when I was about 10, I guess. So. Wow. So what exactly is the podcast? Tell us about it. Well, it's just called Julie's Library. Mm -hmm. And it's about, uh, I, I and my daughter are in my little library. And we read books for, it's really a, a geared toward very young children. But hopefully their parents and um, grandparents even who want to sit with them and listen. And after we've read the story, we discuss it, we talk about the ideas. We talk about words and how wonderful they are, and we invite the kids to send things to us, and they come online, and all kinds of things. And it's, it's um, hopefully comforting and something to listen to and spark the imagination a little bit. So it was silly not to try to get it ready for release, and uh, that's what we did. No, I'm from one parent to another. Thank you. Um, but while we're talking about the podcast, I do want to obviously bring in Emma, your daughter. Let's let's bring Emma in. Emma, can you hear us? Are you here? I can. Can you hear me? I, I can. Hi. Hi. Good to meet you. All right. Well, we were just talking about the podcast. Um, um, Julie's Green Room, that's what you're calling it, right? Julie's no, Green Room. Julie's Library. But oh, Julie's no. Green Room is something that I'd love to talk about as well. Because, uh, well, Emma, do you want to talk about that? So Julie's Green Room is a Netflix series that we did about four years ago together, and it stars yeah. mom um, as uh, the director of her own small theater company, and she has um, students who come and learn theater, uh, how, to, how to produce a musical, basically, from her, and those were puppets created by the Jim Henson Company. It's a lovely show that celebrates the arts, and we've been finding and hearing that people have been discovering it again during quarantine, and... So Netflix, Kelly. on Netflix, and Mom has embarked on a social media campaign of putting out some little videos in conjunction with each of the episodes on, uh, yeah. on her Facebook page. And also, we have wonderful guest stars: Josh Groban, we have, and and Matt, and all sorts of wonderful Sarah people. Perellis and Alec yeah. Baldwin, and lots of fun people. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, so y'all also, and I, I know this um, uh, because whenever I was actually writing my own children's book, I, I was in there and I went in the store and I kind of looked at all these stories and I was like, I had no idea. But y'all y'all had written, what is it, 30 books together? Children's books? It's actually over 30 now. I think it's 32. Yeah. 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 I like 32, 33. A lot of work. I mean, because honestly, I've, I've written a couple and they're, they're almost harder, like the cadence and how I, because mine rhyme as well. So it's just like the cadence of it is, it's kind of wow, good for you. Yeah. It's it's very difficult. Oh, thank you. Um, but it was um, it, it was just a really interesting thing. Like, how does that work? Like, whenever y'all have like, because even me with my editor, we have creative differences. Like, how does that work between you two? Like, who wins in that creative <laughs> argument? The best idea wins. Uh, best idea uh, wins. That's our saying. Yeah. Uh, if we have a, if we stumble on something, uh, there are two or three things that work, but. One is for sure our, our, our mantra is that the best idea wins. If one of us is more passionate about something or fervently believes that this is the way to go and so on, we, one of us, the other one seems to recognize that. And then the other is to take a little break for a cup of tea or even a bathroom break once in a while. And it does wonders for the brain because you suddenly stop what you're doing. And while you're fiddling around with a cup of tea or something, you get back on track somehow. Uh, yeah. I can't think of any better way to say that, Evan, can you? Yeah, the answer comes. Yeah, the answer no. does come. It's because you free the brain for a moment. 
Yeah, I know. I even writing songs, I'm like that. I have to walk away and come back and kind of escape the bubble. But um, oh. my question though is, I grew up around so many books, and that's why I'm an avid reader now. Uh, God bless my mom. I'm glad that she she instilled that in me. Um, but my favorite book, um, I can't ever escape, and I'm really getting into it now with my five year old little girl who now is in love with it as well. But was Matilda? That was my my favorite oh. book. Yeah, it was my first like big book to read by myself. And I was wondering, since y'all are authors and you and you love reading as well, like what would you suggest? Like what were your favorite books when you were kids? Like what's a story that you really love that you think parents should maybe get and read with them? You uh, go first, John. Oh, oh that's yeah. so nice. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we actually uh, finish each other's sentences. So that's funny, darling. Yeah, oh, my God. I hope my daughter and I are like, y'all. This is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we do finish each other's sentences. Go ahead, Em. All right. So for me, that book was The Phantom Tollbooth. It I was, love that one. Oh, that, was such a, that was my rainy day book, my go-to book. And I just loved the idea of, like, being in your own house and getting in a toy car and driving through a little toy toll booth and being in a totally different world. And I remember what I loved best was that in that book, one of the places he drove to was a town called Dictionopolis, where people literally bought and sold words and words had like flavors and colors to them. And I was just so completely enchanted by that. And I think that's part of the reason why I love words to this day. I really do. And y'all, is that the podcast that y'all involve with the words, right? With you ask kids their favorite words and think yes. that's really cool that y'all are innovative with that and you, and you include them and you're engaging them. That's a really, really clever thing to do. What, well, I mean, what is out though, from your lips to, to, to uh, all the children that are listening, I hope they like it. No, my kids, my kids, especially my daughter is learning to read right now. So she loves, like, anytime she gets a new word, she feels so proud. Um, so what are, your, what are some of your favorite words? If you love words so much, Emma, what are some of your favorite ones? Family yeah. is definitely one. We actually, um, we, we sort of have started to play a game uh, recently, believe it or not, because uh, this is such a sad and terrible time. And I was trying to say to the family, because we get on Zoom, all of us, you know, I've got children in. California and I've got relatives and family in England and so on. So I was saying to them all, think of the nicest word you can think of uh, to cheer us all today and we'll each contribute. And um, my word, I think the first one I came up with was spring, wasn't it, Emma? It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And another favorite, of, I think another favorite of mine is, is hope. And it's not just because it's a beautiful word for right now, but it's also my daughter's name. And I think that's why I chose it, why we chose it. Yeah. Uh, I love you. It's Hope and Sam, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 Those are great names. They are great in names. Fact, in fact, Kelly, Sam is sitting right in front of me today because he's a phenomenal sound engineer and he's been helping me get onto this recording today because I know nothing about it. And yes. A shout out to Sam. What up? Hey. Yeah. He's sitting over there with his mask <laughs> on being a very good fellow. Yeah. I'm going to play the game. One of my favorite, I think. Possibly my favorite word is magic. Um, well, that's and, great. Yeah, not just because it's escapism. I like the magic of it and, 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 you know, the word, that word. But I like that anything can be magical. Like, you know, a moment, like a snow, you know, it could be snowing outside or it could be something your kid says to you that kind of breaks your heart. I in the get best it way. completely. I get it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, there are so many if you start thinking about them. Joy. Yeah. Um, wonder. Wonder is another favorite of ours. Yeah, we have a, a motto for our publishing uh, company, which is words, wisdom, wonder. Words lead to wisdom, which lead to wonder. And we call them our three W's. I love that. I love y'all as a team. You're so great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, great pleasure. I mean, we didn't know when we began writing together that it would be um, such a joy. But, I mean, can you imagine, uh, Kelly, if your little girl... Uh, <coughs> at, at five, I grew up and became an equal, a beloved equal, and you were writing with her. It's, a, it's quite a wonderful gift, and that's the way it was for us. Yeah, we did write like a little bit when, we, when you were young, Emma. We did. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I think that connection, nothing beats it. When you have something that your kid, like, even like my kid, like no one in my family, this is going to sound ridiculous, no one in my family likes beats but I love beets. And so my daughter came along and like, she's the one that she's like obsessed with beets with me. So we have beets and beets all the time. And well, like, as we say in my family, you share the beets gene, right? Yeah, that's, 
I know you either ha hate them or love them. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.